Praise the Lord, dear friend, Thomas Manton IV, coming to you live with some more words from the boss. I am continuing from yesterday on the subject of the laws of obedience. Blessings, judgments, and the laws of obedience. There's nothing that can help you in your life than being obedient to the voice of God. Foundational scriptures, Deuteronomy 8, verse 1 said, If you can hear the word of the Lord, hear him, read it, read that, read the whole chapter of Deuteronomy 8. Do your homework, do it. But let me just mention the point. Discern, hear, discover, decide to do his voice, whatever he tells you to do, and the Lord will bless you in many ways. He said even with real estate, come on, even with uh, houses by the water, many, many things will begin to happen for you. And the Lord is very interested in blessing his people, to say the least. I mean, that's an understatement if I ever heard one. He wants to do that and much more. He wants to give you his favor, his kindness, his mercy, his glory, his love. You, you can't imagine <clears throat> the depths that, of what he has. Now, we need to be transformed into the, into the realm, the realms of God in the spirit to <clears throat> really connect and receive everything that he has for us. And I want to talk about that in a second, but Another foundational scripture is Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 to 13. First verse again says, If you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, he'll set you on high even over kingdoms, nations, situations, all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, good things, powerful. <clears throat> give you kingdom power, glory, authority. It's awesome. And... Um, Hmm. Uh, Third John 2 said, as a foundational scripture, I want you to prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So your soul has to prosper for you to get these other things, health and healing and soul prosperity and things like that. Right, right. Yeah, yes, yes. You know, the, have you ever heard somebody do that? You say to the audience, yes, and then you answer yes, because there is no no to that. No to that is disastrous. You don't know what ungratefulness, uh, unkindness, lack of uh, obedience to God can do to destroy your life and your world. Father, thank you for your anointing. Think through my mind, speak through my lips, and let me declare what you want to say to your people. Thank you for blessing your people. This is a season of blessing, even though it seems like the world's in an, an uproar and an upheaval, and it is kind of but. This too will pass quickly. By the way, I prophesied on May 19th, <clears throat> more than two weeks ago now, that the lockdown would be broken. It'll break, it'll stop, it'll end, and it's, it's about to end. Let me prophesy before it happens, because I need this date stamped again. My tech people have this date stamped on the videos. May 19th, which was a Tuesday, around 6 p.m., and the time zone I'm in, the Lord had me declare that. At that time, nobody knew when this thing's going to end. Still, people are like, really? After 70, going on 80 days uh, of being locked down, people are disoriented. And I, if I tell them that it's going to end, they go, really? When? Really? Like, they don't even believe somehow enough. Is it really going to end? Yes, it's going to end. Listen to God's prophet here. It's going to end within some days. It's going to happen really, really, really quickly from now. So just remember I told you that. Boy, I would hate to come in July after it's been broken or August or later on in the year and say, you know, I said that. Which is okay if it's true. Of course it's true. But you don't want to lose the bite <clears throat> of the of the timing, which is right now. So I feel I felt from the next day a reverberation of the glory going forth, and restaurants started to open. Businesses started to open. Salons have now started to open. They were closed for a month, some of them. Major salons. Major, you know, spa, you know, services, spas, in the malls, you know. <coughs> excuse me, restaurants and <coughs> shops, and they're beginning to open. <coughs> it's going to happen. And by the way, 
this violence that's going on in America won't last long. It can't. Those devils always fizzle out. Bunch of crybaby, despicable dweebs. Let me call them names. And um, moronic bean poles. You want to just slap them upside the head with something. Say, go back to mama. I thought of this before. That's why I'm saying it. The Holy Ghost just give me this idea. It's funny. But it's, it's reality. Go back to mama. Go, go back to your mama's basement. Maybe she, she boiled some potatoes for you, son. And maybe she'll buy you a new Game Boy or a new... Not Game Boy. That's for babies. <laughs> a, a new Xbox for uh, Christmas if you're... If you're nice to her, you're out to causing destruction in the thing, but then you go home to mom and act like you're a nice son. Live in the basement like a buffoon. <clears throat> Get a life. Or go to jail. Somebody said uh, uh, Dan Bongino, who's a really radical guy, he was a secret serviceman for two presidents, I think Bush and Obama. He said he didn't agree with Obama, but he did his job well conscientiously as a secret serviceman but he he said i don't care how long it takes use the video surveillance or whatever and follow these people up <clears throat> maybe they'll do that into next year if it takes a year after the election and president trump has been sworn in again and hopefully the republican uh, the, the congress will go republican and the senate will stay republican with more of a majority and then mr trump can get some things done president trump our dear potus can get some things done without all this hindrance and they won't be able to come up with these conspiracies collusion and then try to impeach him on this and it was all nonsense i mean if you have a rational a bit of uh, brain matter to think with uh you <clears throat> you could see it was all a setup but if the republicans listen to me people that are international you may not know this let me teach you something if if the republic if the house and the senate the congress which is the House of Representatives, which would you would consider your parliament. And then the other branch of government in America, which is the Senate. If they're all Republican, Republican, and the president's Republican, they have all the committees, and these Democrats, can then, they cannot then uh, get anything through to, to uh, hinder the president. So that's our prayer. I had a dear friend last night, I was on the phone with him, and he said, some Christians can be lazy. They don't get out to vote. You know, they think everybody's going to vote for them. These people want to overthrow America. These devils want to overthrow. They want to get their democratic thing any way they can. And people need to vote on November 3rd. Are you hearing God's prophet here? So I didn't plan to say that, but the Holy Ghost is talking. So vote November 3rd. Vote the red Republican down the line and get it, um, get this thing sorted out. But people that kill people and destroy property and <clears throat> blow up people's businesses and go into steel, they need to be in prison. And now they think they're just going to run around, get away with it. Nobody can do anything. And then when it's over, they just crawl back into their mama's basement with their Xbox. Little psychos. Criminal little losers. They think they're going to get away with it. I pray and I prophesy as God. Lord, I feel your anointing as God. I decree this as your prophet, that they will be followed up and justice will come. Their injustice will not be uh, successful. They won't get away with it. <clears throat> Follow it up, Lord. Cause it to be followed up. It's not your job. He's the big boss of the universe. You don't want to give him small tasks. We pray that he sends his angels and we pray that his spirit gets in people and he prays we pray that he convicts people to get busy about things and it's man's job on the earth to do things and and let me say something about that the reason why a lot of things don't get done is because people don't do them god's not going to come jesus is not going to come off the throne of intercession and at the right hand of god and you know in the bliss and glory of heaven now where he is and has been and will be till he comes back for us and it causes the millennial rain to flow on the earth and all of that. Um, catches us up, takes us away, brings the tribulation, Armageddon, tribulation, wipes out the wicked. Then we have a millennial rain, which is a new heaven and a new earth and a thousand year rain on the earth. And those of us that have been good and faithful and done things will be given rulership of cities, some five, some ten, some more, maybe a few or more. 
uh, and it's glorious. It's going to be a glorious time. Then after a thousand years, he's going to let the devil out of the, the hole again. See if he can clear, clear off some other people. If they've gone wicked, they don't want to side with God, even though they made it into the millennial reign. Think about that. And then that'll be the last time, and then that'll be it. Then he'll throw them all in the lake of fire. Close the door. White throne judgment. If you get to the white throne judgment, you're done. You're not saved. You're lost. Anybody that gets to the white throne judgment, you don't ever want to even think about being there. Because it's not like because you're going to have your day and then you know present things and then, okay, it's okay, go ahead. No, if you're there, you're already under the judgment. And you're just there to uh, for maybe for them to bear record against you and all that. It's scary. The bima is what we call the bima, Greek word bima, I think it's B-E-M-A, seed of Christ is for the believers. Where you still have to give an account for your life. Think about that. Boy, we better do right. We better do well. We better do good, not evil. We better make right choices. Hmm? We need to uh, be the head, not the tail, as the Lord said. We need to be busy about the Father's business. We need to be on with the program that he has. We need to be busy about it. Let me prophesy right now. I just hear the Spirit of the Lord saying this, that many single people are going to get married this year. 2020. In this season of time, God's going to bring you your mate. Some of you have been single a long time. Some people are not young. Let me talk to people. that Not everybody's a, a kid just coming out of school and then, you know, you figured it out. You had a good family and they talk to you about we weddings and all that. And you see people getting married. Let, let me rebuke someone that has a mindset that they're judgmental of anyone that never got married. Because let me let me rebuke that. Even in a leader, even in an anointed man who has is so opinionated about that. Yeah, you figured it out. You got married. You have you you got married young and you, you had all that, but a lot of people don't have that. Let me tell you something. A lot of people, and I really feel compassionate about this, a lot of people didn't have parents to tell talk to them about these things. They never had the talk. I heard a man talking here in the in the black community, the talk, meaning like uh when a kid is like 15, 16 years old or younger, uh, they're going to tell him, hey, if you ever get pulled over, you know, on the road, you know, say yes, sir, no, sir. Your job is to get home, not to try to rail at them or try to do justice. You ever see these videos of people like, well, what did you do? What did you stop me for? And they, they won't give them their license and all that. It's a law. You're supposed to give your license. You're supposed to. You can't win that argument. Next thing you know, they rip you through the window, break the glass, throw you on the ground. You're cut up. You're beat up. Nearly rip your shoulders out of their joints to pull your hands behind your back. And then they throw you in for resisting. You don't need to go through all that. Let your anger vent later. I don't know who I'm saying that for, but this is the talk that they call the talk. But for, for relationships, people never had to talk. You know, they, they used to say like the parents would have the, the birds and the bees talk for the kids, right? The birds and the bees <laughs> the hell is, my lord what does bees have to do with it my lord that's silly the birds and the bees what does it mean basil what does it all mean basil that's crazy right well let's say man and woman I hope it's not one and the same one of the other of the same one of the same one well that's not good but uh, man and woman what, what, what do you do you know Many people had to experiment themselves, learn themselves, have relationship themselves. All kinds of fleeting relationships. People that had boyfriend, girlfriend, uh, you know, girl with a guy and a guy with a girl. I'm just, I'm staying in that arena right now. The others, I don't even want. I'm not. That's not our arena. I'm not even. Not even going to think about discussing that. That's not. That's not in our mode mode of conversation here at all. So, people that maybe had bad relationships, or maybe someone went through a divorce, I don't know, you never got married, even though you are been on in years, do you still believe God, look into my eyes, do you still believe God can bring somebody to you? Do you still believe, can you receive that? Now, I really feel sorry for people that are hunting for the wrong one. Or accept the wrong one. Or think that someone that's not possible of being the right one for them 
for many could be for many reasons uh i really feel sorry for people that uh would uh be bent on that because you know god's going to have his way and only the will of god's going to be done and i want to declare that right now father thank you for the right one the right mate the perfect one it's the season for that you're going to give men money. You're going to even give women money. You're going to help them in their life, in their career, in their business. You're going to give them uh, ways to get ready, be ready. And when they don't feel ready, they feel like, you know, untoward, uh, uh, unworthy or nervous, you know, because, you know, it's an adjustment if you live by yourself for a long time. Then you can think you're going to live with someone and the house is going to be yours and theirs. Ooh, that's a... To some people, that doesn't seem like anything. But to other people, that's huge. That's a huge adjustment. Father, make us ready. Make people ready. Make people ready. Help them get ready. This is powerful. Wow, Lord, for speaking this. Thank you, Jesus. Help people get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Help people get ready, Lord, to be ready. And a man that thinks, yeah, he needs money for the house, he needs money for the for the things, and yeah, you, he has to have some money. Ain't no fun being broke. Can't have good romance without any finance. <laughs> Not in this day and age. I don't know when people grew up broke. You know, yeah, you hear the story about people, they got together, they didn't have two things to rub together, and they just had an old car and nothing, and they were just... We're going to go on their business and you know, they got the mate and then they built it together. That's your story. That, maybe that's your story. Maybe that's somebody's story. And, and if that's not your story, don't you get tired of hearing that over and over and over? Like, ooh, look at them. Look at him. Would you stop? Would you stop? Get your own testimony. It should annoy you hearing those kind of things over and over and over the same story. You know, when I was 18 years old and then I met my wife and then we went, who cares, mate? Who cares? Go on. Do what you want to do. That has nothing to do with a lot of people, man. Tired of the story. Jesus. Storytelling is good. It's good preaching, too. It's a... It's a it's a giftedness of uh, skill of speaking, of being a good speaker. <laughs> and I'm happy. I'm not upset. But uh, sometimes you just like you, you're taking too much time dwelling on the wrong thing. Why not? Why don't you? Oh, this is powerful. Lord. I just see the Lord saying right now, why don't you like study on marriage principles? You know, the scriptures about it, some marriage seminars. Some maybe, maybe someone's done some look it up, do your research. Maybe someone's done some seminars on uh preparing for marriage and don't listen to any hokey person. Hokey, I mean, in a way like you know, like it doesn't groove with you. They, their speaking style, their genre, the way they talk, their mannerisms, their quirky speech, and their fun, corny jokes, or you know, <laughs> you know, you, you don't want to hear that. So, so, amen. So, <laughs> this is great. But find someone who can teach you, who you respect, you love the way they speak. And look at people that are successful. I have a dear friend in America, he's an apostle, a dear friend. He just wrote me yesterday, said, how am I doing, what's going on? I said, great things are happening. We're moving right ahead. Wonderful, wonderful, kicking it. Beautiful. And he tells a story about his wife. His wife is a powerful anointed woman, prayed with him helped him, was there with him, and they built something great, and they're together. See, that's encouraging, so I can, I can listen to them. I can listen to them. Find people that you can listen to. Not that you shouldn't listen and learn from as many sources as you can, but find people that, you know, when they say something, it grabs you, you learn something, you get impacted by it. You understand what I'm saying? Don't be listening to the same old stories that seem like fairy tales for you because they never happen father i thank you for a deep deliverance in the soul is a funny it's kind of a street slang i call a person who's burnt they call him a burnt lucy and then someone that has too much time on their hands and they're looking they call him a looky loo 
Well, a lady would be a looky Lucy. A man would be a looky Lou. They just looking, 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 blinking, studying, trying to get information, see who's doing what. They know everything about everybody, but they don't know anything about themselves. Let me say that slow. They know everything about everybody, but they don't know anything about themselves, their own life. And we find that uh, scripturally in Song of Solomon, chapter 1. Read the whole chapter. I don't have time to turn there right now. Um, I'm on a roll here. I don't want to take it off over into that. And I shared this a few days ago, also in another broadcast. But it says, uh, they gave me the vineyard to keep, but my own garden I didn't keep. They gave me the vineyard and I kept their vineyards, but I, my own vineyard I, I had not kept it. Had not kept it well. So you need to work on your own. That's the wisdom part of the wisdom in that. And also uh, in, in, in Genesis uh, 2, 3, we see where Adam was told to keep the garden, to guard it. That was his job. You know, the funny thing is that God won't always come and guard your garden for you. And the scripture says in another witness, this another verse says, guard your heart for out of it flow the issues of life. So we're supposed to guard our spirit, our spiritual life. I heard another message where somebody was talking about uh, uh, safeguarding stuff that they had. Boy, I wish I had heard that at a certain time in my life when I was shifting and I just let I just was too easy with giving things. And what do we count it as a seed, you know? But I should have. Uh, I thinking back on it, I wish I had a way to hold on to that and uh, just leave that solidified. But God knows, and you know, there's always more resources to come to you. More things you could buy, more money you can have, but you don't want to waste anything. So whatever you uh, have built and worked upon, you need to guard that very strongly. But God wants to work on you and get you ready for the best that he has. You know, there's a promise in the scripture, Genesis 2.18 and Proverbs 18.22. It's not good for man to be alone. I'm going to make a help me for him, Genesis 2.18. Boy, I'm prophesying here. And then uh, Proverbs 18.22 says, uh, When a man finds a wife, not a knife. When a man finds a wife, not strife. When a man finds a good wife, he'll have a good life. And obtain favor, special favor from the Lord. So there's a blessing in the union. A blessing that God has. We don't want to miss that. We want to have it. So let's pray right now. Father, this is the Holy Ghost. I didn't plan to say anything. This is just coming by the Spirit. This is prophetic, all prophetic here. I, Lord, I just command in Jesus' name that you will cause in this season coming up now to get your precious son or daughter hooked up with the right mate the right way and they cannot make a mistake. The bliss of the relationship you'll make and they will not make any mistake. The relationship and connection will be divine and nothing will be misaligned. It will be, it'll, you're going to, it'll be coming to, to bake, to get ready, then to come into the realm of it be, it, it, of make and there'll be no mistake. It'll be made and it'll be beautiful like shade under the palm tree. I feel the anointing. Father, breathe upon your precious sons and daughters. Right now. Breathe upon them right now. Now, in Jesus' name, receive that. The touch of heaven. He's here. The Lord is here right now. Now, um, somebody that's in a relationship, Wish I knew more about that, but I pray that God will heal you, hook you up, and make your relationship better for the glory of God. Be blessed in that. Let it happen. Amen. So this is a season when God's going to bring together divine connections. Now in business, divine relationships. In your ministry, divine relationships. But especially personally, divine relationship and relationships. The right people for you. The right friends. The right environment. The right surrounding in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to talk to you for a minute about the, the, the law of obedience. Yesterday I just got about three keys into it. Or two or three. And I'm 
Reading from my great book, Prophetic Keys to Successful Living, which we had thousands made, and they're all gone. They're all sold out, but um, we're going to go to reprint on this, and I'm also excited to make it into an ebook that people can get it online. To It's for, for our partners first, that when you're partnering with any great seed, you can get this as my seed into your life. So you're sowing into the anointing, that's upon this great ministry and helping us in the work. And I am sowing the word of God into you. We're both sowing. Seed and seed produces <laughs> combustive massive harvest. So there's the price of obedience. There's the process of a, an obedient life. There's the promise that God gives you that gets fulfilled by a condition, number three. Number four, an, an act of obedience can lead you out of God's plan. You don't want to do that. Number five, hear, speak, and do, then God will do awesome things for you. Don't you love that? Hear, speak, and do. Hear it, speak it, and do it. Hear God, speak what he says, and what you're getting prophetically or by inspiration, and do it. And then God will do awesome things for you. Here's a, number six. The call to obey contains the grace you need to obey God. The call to obey contains God's grace. When he calls you to obey him in something, he gives you grace for it. Number seven. God never asks you to do something you're incapable of doing. Anything God would ask you to do, you're capable of doing it for him. Know that and do it in Jesus' name. Number eight, the golden key to success in life is to hear God's voice and quickly obey him. The golden key in, to success, the formula for success in life, I could call it a diamond key, more than gold, in life is to hear God's voice and quickly obey him. Quickly do it. You know, we know delayed obedience is disobedience in, in some way. So you want to be obedient. Number nine, submit yourself to his lordship. Number 10, let God work in you. Let him work. Let him work in situations. Obedience will cause blessings to come. Uh, here's another thing. Number 11. When was the last time you asked God for what he wants? A lot of times we're asking him for what we want, but why don't we ask him for what he wants? What he wants to do, what he wants to, you know. I've, I had three visitations in the last 14 days or whatever it is now. And and uh, one was to prophesy about the lockdown being broken and ending, and it's coming to an end. It's come, that prophecy is being fulfilled now. It's going to happen in the next many days. You're going to just see it everywhere, like a reverberation throughout the whole world. Lockdown is ending. Get ready to go out again. Enjoy your life. Boy, today I went to a great mall, a different one. It's so elegant. They fixed it up. They built new things there. Oh, my. Planted beautiful colored flowers. And I, thought I, was, I thought I was in a part of heaven. Here on the earth. We don't know. It's the devil to keep you cooped up and bound. Let me not talk about that too much, but it's ending, all right? And then another, one, another visitation... I was talking to two other ones. I was talking to, him about, uh, talking to him about what I wanted when he showed up, when his presence filled my place. His glory cloud came. And finally I thought, he's hearing me, but he's not answering me on that. And I said, let me just stop talking and listen to what, he's, what he came to tell me. He came in his mighty visitation, standing there in my place. The glory of God, I can't describe it. The Shekinah cloud was filled the place. And he came to tell me something. He came to tell me something. So what is it that he came to tell me? And he spoke. So we need to listen to what God wants to tell us. I don't know where I am about number 12 now. Lack, lack, being in lack, wanting, not having enough provision or substance... Resources, money, finance, provision, and resources. It, lack is a signal that you need to shift gears and move. 
as I was talking about, don't stay in one place <clears throat> listening to the same thing all the time. And then you talk, it's like you're, you're doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Guess what? Yeah, God is moving. Yeah, God is with people. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, there's touches. Yeah, the things that happen. But let me tell you, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, you're going you're gonna to keep having the same result you've had everlastingly. So you need to be shifting gears and to get into a greater realm of motion. You need to be equally yoked also. Let me tell you, the, the, also the marriage, people that God is going to hook up, it's going to be equal yokes. Like they're going to be <coughs> signed into your vision. You better watch out if you're a man and you see a woman <coughs> all caught up in uh, another man's ministry, another kind of business and focus that has nothing to do with you. Ginger, lemon, and honey. It's very good. <clears throat> and, um, to like, <laughs> like, you know, you could just sing that song. What's it got to do with me? <laughs> what's it all got to do with me? Write a new song. What was that song by Tina Turner? What's love got to do with it? I don't know what, the, what she meant by the song, meaning, meaning like, uh, there's a reason behind I was reading someone shoot there was a funny reason behind this song, but I don't remember what it is right now. It's not really relevant to even say, but it's about it but really it's about purpose. So so let me use that as an an analogy. Are you working together? Are you connected together? Are you hooked up together? Is someone called and assigned to you to help you become better? God is already, you know, I like this old saying, there's already one, there's already a devil in the world. We don't need another one. You don't need to have the devil out there and then the devil's also in your house. Be careful. Be very careful. I mean, I, I think people should go through many witnesses, a lot of prayer, fasting, all of that to make sure they're hearing right. It doesn't matter you feel good or you, you're just feeling good. There has to be, there's more to it than that. You have to marry according to purpose. You have to connect even in relationships in business. Uh, well, just you could just sell something and not know a person. You provide a service for them. You get paid. That's the one thing. But if you're going to work with people in covenant, or like ministry, like team or whatever, are they really excited about what you're doing? Are they called and assigned to you or are they just there to collect money? Or But especially if you're in a personal relationship together, a cov the biggest decision you'll ever make is two of them is one getting saved and the other one uh, who you who you marry, who you connect with. So if you waited a long time and you're still not in it yet, don't worry, God's going to work on these things for you. And even if you're uh, on in age a bit, He still has somebody for you. God's prophet telling you that right now, in Jesus' name. Number 13, be where God wants you to be, doing what he wants you to do. Number 14, God has challenged us to be disciplined. You need to be disciplined. Obedience also demands discipline. Number 15 or 16, wherever I am. It doesn't matter how you feel. <coughs> you just have to obey his word. 17, you're only a prince can overturn principalities and powers. Only a prince can overturn principalities. You have to have that princely authority and glory, that kingly nature, <coughs> that glory on you. And the spiritual power, listen, let me, let me give you a secret here. Well, this is powerful. This is great. Woo, this is part B of that uh, number 17 here in, the, in obedience. This is where I'm getting it from. You can see it. But I have another page. I might have to do a volume three. I'm not even going to get through this. I have so much on this on this subject. God, you know, God can give you two keys. Like about peace, he gave me two statements. And obedience, he's given me. Wow. 
maybe 50, 45 to 50 statements I'm just reading. I'm not going to get through it on this one topic alone. It's probably the longest sub chapter in this book is on obedience. I don't know anyone that I have three pages, nearly 50 keys about. So let me just give you one or two more. Part B of seven, I think it's number 17. Only a prince can overturn principalities. Now, watch this now. Here's a key to having power and authority and more anointing in your life. Do you want that? More anointing. I know you do. We all say we do anyway, but you got to do something to get it, man. You got to do something to walk in this thing. It doesn't just come by uh, osmosis or through the air, by chance, <clears throat> by coincidence. Comes on purpose. Now here, here's, here's a key on how to get more spiritual power in your life. You want to know what it is? This spiritual power of being able to overturn evil, to walk in the power of God in the kingdom, to have more anointing is to live an obedient life to the laws and principles of God, to his purpose, etc. I love that. One more, one or two more. A good name, Proverbs 22, verse 1, I love this. A good name is better to be chosen than great riches. And loving favor rather than silver and gold. Good name and loving favor are, are very powerful things. We need those. I, I quote that all the time. I love that verse. Proverbs 22, 1. I've loved it for years. Obedience pays the best dividends and benefits. Some scriptures here to look at. Genesis 12, 1, 2, and 3. And Genesis 13, 2, where it said, God made Abram very rich. I'm going to pause there for today. And I'll continue in this tomorrow, Lord willing, unless he says something else. But I have a lot more to say on this. I also am going to share this scripture tomorrow on um, from John 17 about the transfiguration. You know, you, you need to walk in the glory. And that'll help you become much more obedient and just to be so much more powerful in, in many ways. Now, people that are sowing into the ministry, you can have your choice as an e-book. Of the benefits of excellence of the laws of success, I'm going to send those to you. So be a partner. Uh, I had a visitation about a $77 seed, whatever that equates to in your currency in shillings. Kenyan shillings would be 7700 or 7777 Just do it like that. Add two more sevens. Why not? It's almost like a double portion, the number 77 and then 77, all in the same line. And that equals $77. Whatever, euros, pounds, currency. And then God may speak to you a different amount. By the way, you could be a monthly partner. I figured out if you sow 77 a month into this great anointing, God will bless you in so many ways. I'll talk more about harvest tomorrow in the uh, ensuing broadcast. Uh, upcoming broadcast. Uh, but in the 13th month when you've done it, you've sown over a 1,000. When you could do it on automatic, you could become a monthly partner and do it on an automatic recurring thing on my website on thomasmanton.com. And I believe you, you could also do it on PayPal and tell them to bill you monthly. And it just comes through. You won't miss it. You're sewing it. You make sure you don't forget. And you use them to help you sew. That's a very powerful technology, isn't it? To help you be more obedient to God, to be sewing, to receive his blessings. And when it hits the 13th one, if you do it that way, you've sown $1,001. So someone said, I want to sow $1,000 to you, prophet. I want to sow it into your anointing, but how can I do it? I, that's a way you can do it. And other people might have different amounts. People are tithing, sowing, first fruits, missions, alms, you know, to our world mission because I'm all over the world. And I feel the anointing God Almighty again. Here it comes. Whew, Jesus, your presence. Father, touch your son. Touch your daughter with fire right now in Jesus' name. And the blessings of the Lord that make rich and add no sorrow according to Proverbs 13, 22. 
Love you much. And you can send me a WhatsApp to remind me or an email. Or even there's a portal box on my website that you can fill in the contact form and I will get that message. Okay. And you can also direct, in, direct message me here on this platform. And send a, by messenger a direct message with your prayer request or to say hi. Please do that on the screen. You can do that. Also, hit the share button on this. <clears throat> Just remembering now again to say that. I need to get it in my vocabulary beginning and middle and end of the message. Hit the share button and share this with someone. Share it with them. It's a very powerful word. It'll bless many people. So when you also when you spread the word of God, when you spread the word, the prophetic word, by sharing this, you are sowing a seed to enrich someone's life. And then God will see that and bless you back. So you need to be sowing every day in these ways. Financially, blessing people, helping people, spreading the good word, spreading the prophetic word, and letting it enrich people's lives. It's my privilege and pleasure to bring you the word of the Lord. I'm Thomas Mantha IV. Remember the great words of Isaiah, <clears throat> the great old, our great old grand uncle prophet, Isaiah, 48, 17, when he said, I, the Lord said through him, so tell the people this, I am the Lord, your God, who will teach you to profit and lead you in the way you should go. And I always say when you want a prophet, P-R-O-F-I-T, you need to have the prophet speaking to you, P-R-O. P-H-E-T will lead you into the P-R-O-F-I-T. Profit for profit. In Jesus' name, love you much and I'm praying for you. Write me your prayer request. Send your seed. And I'm going to be releasing fire of blessings upon your life. Get ready to be blessed in Jesus' name. Talk to you on the next broadcast. Love you very much.